Okay, time's come. Panel build. start the panel build. Um, I'm going to do it over several um, several clips. As you can notice here there's already holes uh, drilled in to the cabinet here as, as this is a cabinet from or used cabinet uh, that I picked up free like a lot of things here that are going to be tossed away. It's a repurposed cabinet so I'm going to have to be careful of where I mount things in order to cover these holes yet uh, still have space for all my equipment. Um, a lot of panel builders out there, I see they do their panels and their main concern, or what, uh, I hear them say all the time, oh, you've got to leave room for the, the key locks, the key locks, the key locks. Well, stuff the key locks, I got rid of them. Chuck them out so I can utilise all the space on the door here. Uh, what I did was instead of that, I just put a little latch on the side here. Latch open, latch, latch closed. So what it does is it enables me to put everything where I want to put, right to the edge. So it's going to give me plenty of room here. So what I'm going to do uh, is grid this up, I'm going to remove the door here, um, tape it up, grid it out, place all my um, stuff where I think they should go, move things up and down, and then I'll uh, draw it all out, make sure everything goes, everything fits, some spare room if anything else comes along. Um, let's get into it. Okay. As you can see, I've got the door off here. Never mind about all this other stuff that's all going to get cleaned off later. So I've got some masking tape here. We'll mask this up. Okay. It's all masked up, ready to go. I've got all my bits and pieces here. Um, I will lay them out and so here we go. Okay, um, I've got everything here roughly laid out. Um, I haven't drilled any, uh, uh, made any lines because I wanted to make sure that everything fitted. Uh, as there'll be quite a few wires on this board, um, I'll be using small uh, cable ducting. Um, probably a piece sort of here, here and, and here. So all the cables can, from these, can go into this duct and they can run along before they make the sweep over to the, um, the rest of the control panel. Um, I've done a little bit of shimming around to, uh, from my original plan, so as I can utilize the holes up here. Um, I thought that the water would, uh, the water meter here would cover this, the holes here, but unfortunately it's not going to, so I've had to, sh to change that around a bit. Um, <clears throat> So, now in choosing my components, um, especially with the PIDs, this is an Inkbird timer. Look at the depth of that sucker. And the Inkbird PIDs are pretty much that deep, which limits your um, space in behind it into the panel. So I did a bit of research and, and I've gone with a Novus PID. Get a load of depth of that. Look at that. It's a third of the depth. Okay, what we need to do now is we've got the green LED and the red LED. We need to mark out our square for our PIDs. And notice here it says duct, duct, duct and duct. These are going to be uh, cable ducts that are going to stick on the underside because there's going to be a few, fair few cables here, so the switches here, the wires will go into this duct, across to the inside, the inside, the inside, etc, etc. So we're going to mount this PID roughly between these two LEDs, I'll mark the squares up, and we'll go from there. Okay, everything's all done. Ready for the cutout tomorrow. Utilise the existing holes, slightly off centre, but that's fine. The water, all the LEDs, everything's marked up, ready for a drill and a cut tomorrow. <coughs> all right, 
stuff. All the markings are done. Um, you do this so you know exactly where you're going, and if you make a mistake, you can take the tape off and redo it again. All measurements are done. Now I'm going to get ready to make all the uh, hole saw cuts. Now I opted to go for a hole saw style. This is a really thin blade designed to cut steel and it's slightly beveled at this edge so you don't go all the way through. Cuts really square, really nice. So I've got this here so I'm going to now uh, on all my holes, of course, get the hole punch. So, so this won't wander around. And I'll punch all the holes here that I need to drill for the 22mm hole saw. And then I can start drilling, drilling those holes. I've got some wood underneath it. Something pretty tricky for square ones, but do the round ones and uh, start drilling. Okay, as you can see, I've done all my 22 millimeter holes for switches and lights. Uh, the two remaining holes now are five one, two, three, four for the PIDs and the timer, and one for the water here, and they're square. Now, there's not much play on the PIDs, they're very all of them seem to be. I don't know why they make the lips so, so small that um, you, you've got to make these exact, exact, exact. So what I'm going to do is I'm once going to get my 22mm uh, hole saw. I'm going to cut up one hole saw here and one hole saw there, having the edge of the hole saw onto the lines. Thus, I can use the jigsaw to finish these off and then... Um, do the fine adjustment with the file. I was going to use a small Dremel, Dremel grinder, but I've seen a few people use them. They go through the blades like, like anything, and I've only got a battery one, and that won't do them all. So I've got some new blades for the jigsaw. So I'm going to do a hole here, hole here, jigsaw up, down, and across. And for the water cutout, uh, it's the unit's square, but it has rounded edges. So I'm gonna, once again, I'm going to hole punch that. These I've got a, a drill bit here of the same diameter, so I'll drill this on each four of the corners. So then it'll give me the radius that the uh, unit needs, and then I can just go up and down uh, with the jigsaw again, and then do the fine tuning with the file. Righto. As you can see, all the holes are now cut. Once again, measure 100 times, cut once. Um, the jigsaw works quite well here with my two hole saws here and cut those out. They uh, come out quite fine. All the holes are here done now. Um, now it's a matter of getting the door back onto the, onto the panel, uh, removing the tape, giving it a clean down, and mount all the gear onto the door. Righto, um, finally got it all, uh, all put together, uh, doors cleaned uh, and all the equipment's on. Um, a few lights are waiting on order, the colour changes but that's no biggie but everything is in, is in place. So, Take you through it. Um, I can start getting all the trif light labels measured up and done. Now put those on order. All right, to start the system here, this is going to be our, our damper drive, um, which opens the damper motor up there, let the air in. Let me turn our exhaust 
on. And then we can turn the gas on. Now each of those will be in sequence. None of these will work until this is fully opened. Then this will work. This won't work until this is run for a few seconds and get this air movement. And the gas is off. Over here, these two here. One here is going to be um, mains water, tank water, and over on this side here, it's going to be HLT, both HLT and boil kettle, and boil kettle. Then you can set that both, set to both, and then this one, this unit here, we put our how much litres we want and go. Down here is our PIDs and timer. Um, the switch down here is not an alarm switch. This actually will control whether the flame for, uh, for any of these or the electric element is on. So I could, if turn it on and that's on, that, that goes on. That means the flame for the HLT is on. Vice versa, this one here, mash tun, the element for the, in the, for the mash tun temperature on and off and the boil kettle and our timer with a, a buzzer there and these here just to make sure that the flame's on or the power uh, with our timer here start, pause, reset and move further down here we have our emergency stop button we have our HLT pump water pump this here is a pre-boil alarm, so when it gets to 95 or 98, well, not, not sure yet, I'll, I'll do that. Um, this will let me know that it's about to hit boil and to keep an eye on it in case we have, a, have an overflow. This blue switch here is for the O2 to go in, set to a time. And this one here is our recirculated pump for the counterflow chiller. So. I can go and get some labels done and keep going. All right, we've uh, got the panel together and we have finally got the labels from the label people. Um, as you can see now, everything's labeled. Right from the top, on off exhaust, water flow meters. All the way down. I got them to make the labels a little bit bigger than what they suggested, just so as you can see them easy and So next we'll be getting a plan to start wiring it. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do in the next videos will be I'll do it in sections. So the first section I'll probably do will be the emergency stop circuit, um, and then I'll do one piece at a time. So then I'll do the emergencies, and I might do the water. Um, at each um, section I'll do. I'll accompany with a small video just to go through the process, also just to see um, if everything will work out as I plan, and then we'll test each section as we go, hopefully. So I'll hit the power in, and then we'll put the um, emergency circuits in, etc., etc., so as when you know, the switches are off, nothing else can be turned uh, back on once the emergency button is pressed. So uh, when I get up to that, we'll uh, go through that. Cheers.